welcome to the Stark Net Quest between Bravos and Realms Loot Survivor. We're going to help you grow your Stark Net Pro score by playing a game of Loot Survivor. So we won't go through the details of how to complete this. I'm sure you'll be able to follow along and it all makes a lot of sense. What we'll show you is how to um, play a game of Loot Survivor. So when you get to this part of the quest, click here. It will open up the Loot Survivor DAP in your browser. You can either watch the intro or you can skip to get into the game. What you'll see is that there is an onboarding wizard. And this onboarding wizard is going to take you through the steps to create a arcade account, which is like a burner wallet, which is slaved to your master wallet, which will allow you to play the game of Loot Survivor without having to make transactions in your wallet. Now, this is all taking place on testnet. So there's not going to be any cost involved from gas perspective or from the Lord's perspective. But it is going to familiarize you on how to uh, play the game Loot Survivor. So when you want to play on mainnet, you know exactly how to do it. So the first step is to connect your Startnet wallet. So connect your Bravos wallet. You'll notice that you get this pop-up to say that you need to switch your network. So to do that, you simply go up to your browser extension and switch here. Start early. Now, if you don't have a, um, a uh, testnet wallet, you can create one. So in this instance, I do have some, but I'll create a new one. So add new account. I will need to deposit some ether. So very simply, I can actually do it either through the through the app, or I can do it through uh, through the through the browser. So through the wallet extension, or through the DAP itself. I can do it through that. So okay. get ETH. So me to force it. Now I'll need to copy and paste my wallet address. Let them know that I'm not a robot. And there you go. That's the request made for uh, Gurley ETH. And go back to the DAP now. And um, wait for that tra transaction to complete. All right, then. So you'll see now that I have received some testnet ETH from the faucet. I can go back to the game, Loots of DAP, and you can see that it's uh, automatically registered here. However, if you need to, you can, uh, and it's not registering, you can uh, reset and um, reconnect, and then it will show that the ETH is there. Now, I want to get some Lords, which Lords is the, the currency of the Realms on-chain gaming ecosystem. It's the, the currency needed to play a game of Loot Survivor. So there's a faucet here. I'll click on Lords. I'll sign this transaction. So you can now see I have 625 Lords, which is enough for quite a few games of Loot Survivor on testnet. Um, over 20, 30 games, I think, something like that. Again, if you complete this step and you're not seeing the Lords balance, then you can reset and reconnect your wallet and hopefully it will be there. Now, stage four. This is um, to set up what we call an arcade account. So an arcade account means that when you play a game of Loot Survivor, you can uh, sign, you can you can be signing transactions in game without having to go to your browser extension, your wallet extension, your browser rather, um, which makes the game like super fluid and fun. So um, I'm going to create a wallet. Uh, I'm going to say that I want to load up that arcade account with ten games. Why not? And so you can see that it's going to um, create a burner account with um, ETH and with Lords. And that, will, that account will actually be held inside of my browser. I click uh, and then I sign the first transaction, which sends the uh, ETH and the Lords to the burner or the account, arcade account. This process, um, can take a few moments and uh, or a few minutes, and as it says, please don't refresh.
So the second transaction is uh, setting permissions between your uh, main wallet, your testnet wallet, and the, the burner arcade account wallet. Um, what it's, it's doing is, is uh, only allowing um, certain transactions to be made in the burner account. So uh, it, in fact, is creating a really secure way of you having this wallet, which allows you to um, play the game without making transactions, without risking anything from your main wallet. So we are now into Loot Survivor. You can see that you are connected to the uh, DAP using a arcade account. You can actually go and have a, long, have a look at your arcade account here and see you know, that it has uh, ETH and that it has Lords. Uh, you can actually connect to, if you need to top up, you can connect to the um, master wallet um, and add ETH and add Lords, but we don't need to do that right now. So. As it stands, I have both ETH and Lords inside of this Arcade account. So I'm just going to make sure that it is connected. OK, now the DAP is connected to this Arcade account. You can see the balances. I can close it up. And now I can start my game. So start Create Adventurer. I need to choose uh, the weapon that I wish to start the, 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 the game with. And I want to choose a username. So we'll be Rust Lord, and we will choose the wand. Now, when I click this, I'll be asked to pay, and I'm paying with Testnet Lords. You'll note that um, because my arcade account is connected, I don't have to sign any transactions in my wallet. Okay, so the battle has begun, or rather the game has begun, using the arcade account. And um, how do I play Loot Survivor? So Loot Survivor is a game where you are an adventurer who's woken up in the mist, and you have picked a weapon, and you are stepping into the mist, looking to um, encounter beasts, to um, defeat them in battle, or to escape from them. Uh, to avoid traps and to level up your uh, adventurer with um, better equipment and with better stats. And your objective is to score as much XP as you possibly can so that you can climb the on-chain leaderboard. Now, the on-chain leaderboard, this is testnet. Um, but you will see that once you've um, started your game that uh, you are on this uh, list here. So here I am, Quest Lord. Uh, and when I die, my score will go over to the leaderboard. Now, if I were to score over 2,142 XP, which is quite a high score, to be fair, um, I would take over the number one position. And that's all on chain. Um, now, this is just the testnet version of the game. But if I were in the top position on mainnet, then I am eligible to receive Lord's rewards every time somebody starts a new game. So first, second, and third place all receive um, attributing Lords every time a new player starts the game. So on testnet, you're trying to get good so that you can go over to mainnet and uh, top the leaderboard. So um, how do I actually play? So I go back to play and um, I'm going to fight this troll. I actually don't have any choices at the moment. I can, um, I can, uh, I have to fight this beast to progress. There's two options in front of you. You can either attack this this beast um, in single hits to see how uh, how effective my attacks are against it and how much damage it does against me, or I can select the till death button, which will just work through the entire battle. Actually, I slayed it in one hit. Okay. So after killing this beast, I've leveled up to level two now. Uh, every time you level up, you go to um, these screens. These screens are firstly to level up your character with um, one of these traits. And then the second screen is the marketplace where I can spend my gold to buy new items. 
so you'll notice that I have my initial wand here, uh, and I have um, all these armor spots, which are currently empty. I have um, these starting traits. So my build, it, there's a random roll at the beginning of the game. And uh, this particular build has given me two for strength, zero for dexterity, one for intelligence, three points of vitality, zero points of wisdom, lots of charisma, and uh, no luck. Actually, luck is acquired in a different way. But these are my initial uh, character traits. I could level up. So I feel like I want to be able to um, flee from beasts. So I think it's quite important to uh, level up my dexterity. So level up next. Now, here I am at the marketplace. So I've got 29 gold. I can also see that I have um, 120 uh, health out of the maximum, 130 health. And I can buy more health. So I'm going to buy health. That takes me up to full. And it's cost me uh, one gold for 10 points of health. Now I can go to the marketplace here and I can see the different items. Now, hint, one of the most popular ways to play Loot Survivor is to look for a high powered weapon in, in the early stages of the game. So this is a tier one weapon, a katana. Tier one is the best. Tier five are the weakest. So I'm going to go ahead and buy this tier one katana. I'm going to equip it. Now, what's going to happen is this transaction isn't going to go through immediately. I'm effectively building out a shopping basket of um, decisions before I commit. So you can see that I've um, bought uh, one potion. I've upgraded my dexterity, and I've bought a, a katana, or at least I put it into my shopping basket. I still have 11 health, so I've got myself a pretty good weapon. And now I'm going to look for some armor. OK, um, you'll note that um, armor, as well as having a tier, so these are T4 items, they also have a material that they're made from. And the materials are um, cloth, uh, hide, and metal. Can't actually see anywhere, so there goes the metal. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and actually um, buy some items which are from the same kind of material. So I'm going to buy this cloth shirt. And I'm going to buy this cloth waist protection. Uh, cloth is the what a magician, a mage style build will wear. Um, and that will probably do me for my initial market. So um, here I can see I bought a katana, a shirt, and a sash. And I'm going to upgrade. Now all of these items are going to go through in a multi-call. Again, you'll notice I didn't have to click anything inside my wallet. There we go. Now I'm back into um, back into the game. You can see my kit. I've got some um, armor on now, my waist and my chest. I have my katana, and I've also increased my dexterity by one. Quest Lord can now go into the beast. Now I can either do one step at a time or I can do a multi-call which will take me until the next fight. I think I'll take myself to the next fight. Okay, here I've run into a wyvern, pretty fierce looking dragon. And it's ambushed me. So it straight away attacked me and dealt damage to my foot, which was unprotected. What I'll note here um, is that this is a level one beast, which means it is um, uh, relatively junior. So um, the levels, um, for example, I'm currently level two. The beast is level one. You'll see beasts that are... Um, you know, up to level 50 if you get that far into the game. So it's quite a low level beast. This is important. It's a tier three. Now, the tiering system is uh, a tier one beast is the most uh, hardcore and a tier five is the weakest. Um, those, those make a difference to um, do I decide to fight this beast or do I run away from it? 
I'd also look at what type of weapon it has and what type of armor it has. And I'll decide based upon my weapons and armor type whether or not I fight it. That's that detail on how to actually um, choose which battles to go for and which to run away from. Um, we suggest that you uh, go to the guide and um, you can uh, go to this section here, damage boosts. And this tells you how the game um, operates. So uh, it will show you which types of weapon are, are strong against uh, which types of armor. Um, don't worry, through play, you'll work this out. And also you can come to the Discord and chat there um, with, the, with the extremely experienced players in the Realms Discord, and they'll help you out. But you'll get to grips with it. But this is like a paper, scissors, rock battle mechanism. So I'm going to go back now to my game. And um, my katana is OK against Hyde. And um, I'm feel confident that I can beat this guy. So I'm going to say, uh, yeah, I'm going to fight till death. Now, if you were playing on mainnet, you'd probably do calculations and you try and do some maths in your head to try and work out, will I, will I win this encounter? But as this is test net, I'm, I'm a bit more casual. OK, so now I've leveled up. So level three, I can add another perk. So um, these perks are all described inside of the um, inside of the guide. So you can see um, what dexterity, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma all do. Um, charisma is, is quite important early in the game for allowing you to buy items cheaply. So I've got 10 gold. I'm actually going to top up my charisma. So then the price of the items and the price of health potions is lower. And OK, I'm naked on the head. So I want to buy myself some head armor, and I want to buy myself some boots, and I want to buy myself some gloves, ideally. So I'll take those gloves. Um, and I will take uh, these boots. I'm going to top up my potions, and I'm going to upgrade. OK, so you're starting to get a feel for it now. We'll wrap this up in a moment. Um, I haven't died. Uh, often, new players will die early. And it, it, it takes some um, experience before you start to feel confident about getting into the mid game when it gets extremely exciting when, you're, when your items start to level up and unlock new characteristics. But I'll now look for another beast to fight. And I'll just show you one more important mechanic before we leave which is the fleeing mechanic. Now, if I encounter a beast that I think, OK, that beast is overpowered for me right now. So this dire wolf, for example, has ambushed me. It's hit me pretty hard, done some damage. It's got quite high health rating. It's level 6, which is double my level. Um, it's tier 4, which is the second like weakest type of tier. Um, however, I'm not liking the look of this. It's also got a blade attack, which is very strong against my cloth items. So in this instance, what I can choose to do is flee. Now, flee is like the attack mode. I can either try and do it once, or I can just keep on doing it until I either die or flee. Um, fleeing is um, a, a perk unlocked when you have dexterity. The higher your dexterity, the more likely you are to be able to flee. So I'll click the... Be till death, and we'll see if we can get away from this direwolf more if it uh, kills us. Okay, I fled. So that's the general um, idea of the game. I, I won't go any further, but what will happen is you'll eventually die, probably before you, um, probably before you get to, I say, level. Level 20 is fantastic. Level 15 is doing really well. Level 20 is fantastic. Um, if I were to die, for example, now with my 16 XP, I'd be pretty um, low on the leaderboard. But if I were to keep on battling through, maybe I'd get myself up to uh, contention for the, the top three. OK, well, um, 
there's a lot of depth to this game. And uh, there's been approximately 5,000 games played on mainnet. It's super uh, addictive. So level up, get good on testnet, then head over to the main game on mainnet. Okay, so I have now played my game of Loot Survivor on Testnet. So I'm going to go back to the Pro Score page on Startnet Quest and play my NFT. So just need to connect to my wallet. Now it's going to tell me that I'm on the wrong network because the Testnet version of Loot Survivor is on Gurley and Startnet Quest uh, NFT reward is on Mainnet. So I'll switch to Mainnet in my wallet. And I've already claimed this NFT, but the process is pretty straightforward. I've done everything. So I'll just click Get Reward. And uh, there we go. Thanks for playing.